Water and oil emulsions are harder to make than oil and water emulsions. Water and oil emulsions are formulated using low HLB emulsifiers. Oil and water emulsions are formulated using high HLB emulsifiers. Water and oil emulsions have water as their internal phase and oil as their external phase. Oil and water emulsions have oil as their internal phase and water as their external phase. The emulsions most of us are probably familiar with making are oil and water emulsions. These are lotions, creams, conditioners, and other emulsions made with emulsifiers like BTMS50, emulsifying wax, Paula wax, glycerol stearate SE, Read Emuls SCG slash Ecomuls, Lotion Pro 165, and the list goes on and on. But those are just some examples. So since most people who've been formulating skincare products for a while are familiar with oil and water emulsions, I wanna talk about water and oil emulsions today and share with you guys a really basic, simple and easy beginner friendly water and oil emulsion. That way you guys can try it at home. Hey, what's up? My name is Tara and here on my channel, I make skincare products and I share with you guys all the knowledge that I know about formulating. And I share all kinds of unique recipes that I've created that aren't foolproof and tested. So don't go turning around and selling the formulas. You need to make sure you're testing them. Alrighty, so to start out, you want to grab a scale that weighs to 0.01. You can buy a really inexpensive one on Amazon, or if you want the more high-end one that I use that works for large batches, I do believe it's also on Amazon. I'll have them both linked down below. Pick out a low HLB emulsifier. I'm using a Livum 900 and the inky name is Sorbitol Olivate. Don't know if I said that right. You can use pretty much whatever low HLB emulsifier you wanna use. Like I said at the beginning of the video, water and oil emulsions are harder to make than oil and water emulsions. And they are, they're just a lot more pickier. So all I can really say is try it with a different low HLB emulsifier if you don't have the one that I have. I do know that glycerol stearate will work because I experimented using that. The glycerol stearate did make it a little bit thicker. So if you want to lower that percentage, you can. You could also try using a liquid low HLB emulsifier. It will obviously, it'll make the product a lot thinner in the end, but it could work or maybe it could not. You'll have to find out. Next, you wanna pick out a very, very light ammonia ester, preferably. You could use a natural oil, but it's gonna be a lot heavier and a lot greasier. This product in the end contains a high amount of oil soluble ingredients. So it is gonna be heavy and greasy, but if you like that, that's totally fine. But if you're not the biggest fan of that, then you wanna grab an ingredient like caprolate, capric triglyceride. This is EcoSir, it is natural or coco caprile. These are emollient esters. I've talked about them so many times on my channel, so I'm not gonna deep dive into them right now, but they're essentially less oily and less greasy versions of natural oils. Some emollient esters aren't natural or eco cert, so you'll have to do your research on that, but caprile, capric triglyceride, and coco caprile are, and so is squalane. That would be another great ingredient to use. If you do wanna use some natural oils, use maybe about 20% or less. And those natural oils are harder to keep emulsified as well. So you'll probably have issues with that as well, but it is possible. Then you wanna pick out a glycol. Glycols supposedly help make your water and oil emulsions more stable. I'm choosing glycerin. You can use propendiol, propylene glycol, butylene glycol. Glycerin is eco certain natural, so I'm gonna be using that. It's also humectant, so it will help hydrate your skin. And then you wanna pick some kind of thickener. The Olivum 900 will thicken the product, but we wanna add in some other kind of thickener for stability. So what I'm gonna use is sunflower wax, and this will help thicken up the emulsion to help keep the emulsion more stable. So you could use beeswax or any other wax you have on hand, but of course, different waxes can harden your product differently. I do believe that sunflower wax is a harder wax than beeswax. So keep that in mind. If you switch out your waxes, it could change the final like hardness of this product as well. And then this is super, super important. Even though this product contains primarily oil-based ingredients, you still need to use a preservative for this product. And Picking out what preservative that works best will come just with experiments and microbial testing. If you are selling, make sure you're doing all those different testings. If you're just making products for yourself, 
you're your own guinea pig, you know? You can do what you want, obviously, at your own risks. But if you're selling cosmetics, it's really important to make sure you're doing microbial testing, stability testing, and making sure you're using a preservative that works perfectly for your formula. For this, I'm gonna be using Uxel K 900. This is an EgoCert and naturally compliant preservative, so that is why I chose it. You can use whatever broad spectrum preservative you want. It doesn't necessarily need to be water soluble. It could be oil soluble. Whatever emulsifies and doesn't destabilize your emulsion should work, but obviously if you're selling do all the testing. Then you wanna pick out your your water. I'm using distilled water, but if you want, you could use like rose hydrosol or aloe vera or some other kind of hydrosol to give it a natural fragrance. That would be a great idea if you don't wanna use like a fragrance oil or essential oil, but I'm just gonna be using distilled water here. Then lastly, I'm gonna add in some vitamin E. This is mixed tocopherols T50, and I'm adding this in as an antioxidant. I have some sunflower wax in here, so hopefully that will help prevent the wax from going rancid. If you don't actually have any natural oils in your product, you don't need to add in an antioxidant, but I decided to anyway, since I have sunflower wax. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys how we bring it all together. I'm starting with phase A, I'm making 100 gram batch and I'm adding in 66 grams of the Caprolic Capric triglyceride. Then I'm adding in the Olivum 900, followed by the sunflower wax. Set that beaker to the side, grab another heat safe sanitized beaker, add in your distilled water and your glycerin, mix the two together. And then you can go ahead and go over to your stovetop, put it on about medium heat, fill a pan with like an inch or so of water, depends on how big your containers are. And you want to cover both of these beakers with some aluminum foil. Place them in the water bath and let them heat to 85 degrees Celsius, 185 degrees Fahrenheit. You do wanna make sure you weigh phase B, that's your water phase first before you heat it up. Since we're heating it up, some of the water can evaporate. So weigh it so you take note of how much it weighs. And after you heat it up, place phase B back on your scale and add back in whatever water evaporated. Normally it's like one gram or less. Also, you'll need to go to phase A periodically as it heats to mix it. These low HLB emulsifiers are so stubborn and don't like to melt, I've noticed. So give the phase A a mix while it's heating to help get everything to melt down. Once everything is melted, go ahead and remove phase B first, replace back in any water that evaporated, then remove phase A. And what I like to do is first mix phase A, this is the oil phase, with your immersion blender first. I just mix it for like five seconds. And then this is really, 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 really important. You wanna make sure you pour the water phase into your oil phase slowly, just a little bit at a time while mixing with your immersion blender. So what I do is pour just a little tiny bit of phase B into A, while mixing with my immersion blender, I just keep mixing for about 10 to 20 seconds after before I add in more of the water phase. And I just keep doing this until all of the water phase is incorporated into phase A. Like I said, water and oil emulsions are so much, so much more difficult to make than oil and water emulsions. They destabilize easier. They're harder to keep emulsified. So I am just very cautious when making these because I don't have a lot of experience with them. Now, once both your phases are all combined, just let it cool to around 40 degrees Celsius. And then this is when you can add in your cool down phase. So my cool down phase consists of my preservative, and then my natural fragrance oil, or you could use essential oil if you want, or any fragrance oil of your choice, whatever you want, and then a vitamin E. And I mixed in between each ingredient I added in, making sure the emulsion isn't destabilized. And then after that, I just let it cool to room temperature before I covered it, and then I let it sit overnight. Now the next day, if you want, you can give this a, like a whip with an electric hand mixer. I decided to just manually hand mix mine. And just pour it in whatever jar you want. I poured it in a plastic bag and then like cut off the tip and then piped it into my jar just for, honestly, just for it to look better on camera, but you do you, do whatever you want. So this moisturizer, honestly, I, I like these water and oil emulsions a lot more than I thought I would. I think just the even small addition of water does a really good job at making the product feel less greasy. It's. It almost feels, it kind of feels like a sunscreen and a United States sunscreen, not like a Korean or Japanese sunscreen because US sunscreens are a bit more oily compared to body, like typical body lotions. 
but they're not as greasy as I would say an anhydrous body butter. So I think this is a good in between anhydrous body butter and typical lotion. So I don't think everybody will like this, but I do think some will. And also it makes your skin very glowy. I just have so much glow after I add it on. Obviously it's, it's oil, it's like, it's like greasy, but there is just so much glow. And now I kind of want to make a body shimmer water and oil emulsion because I feel like I would just look so shiny. I don't know if it's coming up on camera, but it's definitely adds a gorgeous glow. And I don't feel super, super oily and greasy and heavy, but there is something, uh, Patreon. I made a coffee version of this, but not only is it a coffee version, it's brightening as well. It contains lemon, oil that helps brighten the skin. It contains bakuchiol, it's licorice extract, vitamin C, and also coffee oil. That's how it smells like coffee. I'm obsessed with it. So if you wanna smell like you just walked out of a coffee shop, go over to my Patreon and check out the formula. I think you guys will love it. So I think those of you who do like heavier, more emollient products will love water and oil emulsions. And I think they'll be completely game changing. And I also think they would make good moisturizers specifically in the winter time at night. It kind of sucks that it's like summer right now and this is when people are wanting lighter moisturizers and here I am like, hey, you wanna try this thick cream? I've been wanting to share water and oil emulsions for so long. I have some I've done in the past on my channel, three specifically, no, two, I can think of one over on Patreon. Really love these formulas. These are two of my other favorite formulas I've ever shared. So if you wanna watch these, go ahead and watch these. They'll be linked down below. All right, see you guys later. Also, don't forget to go over and check out my Patreon where I post two exclusive videos every single month. So there is a ton of videos you can go over there and binge watch for only $5 a month. You get access to the entire backlog. And for $10 a month, you can get a shout out for your small business. So let's shout everybody out. Naturesfarmgirl.com. Let's Blend LLC at Stardust Bath and Body on Instagram, HimpyGirl.com, ShopLevi's.com, Owl and Lily on Etsy, EmbraceBeautyEssentials.com, Legendary Bath and Body, Astari Apothecary, Raviga Cosmetics here on YouTube, ExoreBB.com, PardoNaturals.com, Natural State Skin, TheNatureInUs.ca, NearCatalier.com, use the code on the screen for 20% off, EarthAndAmberNaturals.com, Shark City Naturals, Day to Relax Spa, Crowned Glory LLC, LH Scented Soaps and more, Janae Rose, Health Nut Beauty on Etsy, VelvetTemptations.com, Journey Rose Beauty, CHRBrands.com, Homestead Life Goods on Etsy, VanillaBathAndBody.com, Madhouse Mama Soaps, XPo.com, Mystical Morning on Etsy, and the rest of these brands haven't launched yet, SkinByDevu.com, Seventh House and Oak on Etsy, at Black Petal Beauty on Instagram and mycrownandglowery.com. Thank you guys so much for your support. Literally, without you guys on the Patreon, I wouldn't be able to continue doing what I do. So thank you so much. <laughs>